Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have for today Saint, uh, the Feast of St. Matthias, the Apostle. Uh, he is the one who was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot. Uh, this is recounted in Acts chapter 1. Uh, so a second-class feast, as are all the feasts of the apostles, and the color is red, uh, as all the apostles were martyrs. With the feast of today, St. Matthias. Uh, we know he was chosen by Lot in Acts chapter 1 to replace Judas Iscariot, right? Very representative of homosexual priests today. Any priest who is unfaithful to Christ in the exercise of his apostolic ministry. So uh, very appropriate that these two feasts are so close together. Um, a brief life of St. Matthias. Actually, there's not a whole lot known about him. Uh, after he was chosen by Lots, um, he uh, preached and evangelized in the region um, around uh, Jerusalem, um, and then also, uh, in some, case, some accounts, went to Ethiopia, uh, then Greece, and finally uh, what is now called the Republic of Georgia, uh, just south of Russia, north of Armenia. Um, and the accounts of his death are various. Some say he was martyr in, martyred in Ethiopia, more likely is that he was stoned to death and beheaded in Georgia, where, in fact, there is a tomb uh, dedicated to him. Finally, there, there is one account that says he died of old age in Jerusalem, um, but that's uh, not, not really um, uh, legitimate because um, we, the, the, the color for today is red, martyrdom, and all the apostles are martyrs. So that's, um, that's the kind of way you can look at it and say, okay, that that's, um, would be obviously uh, not a very um, a trustworthy account of his death. So uh, St. Uh, Matthias the Apostle, uh, chosen by lots, and then martyred in Georgia, beheaded. Um, you know, a couple things here. First of all, there's no such thing as chance. The apostles cast lots. Uh, but knowing that God himself, God is the one who created randomness, like order, disorder, randomness, chance. Those are all creations of God. And in fact, the mark that uh, they are is the fact that chance is very ordered. Uh, mathematicians can, if, if you try to make, like, they'll... Um, if you generate a random sequence, or if you try to pretend and write down a sequence you think is random, they can tell which is which. There's like a mathematician that will do that in class. He has all the students write down what they think are random numbers, and he can pick out, um, and then he, make, he mixes it with actually random numbers, and he can pick out which are which. So mathematicians, right? Uh, even chance is ordered. So we see that here, right? Uh, the, apost the apostles cast lots, uh, and Matthias is chosen, uh, which God, of course, knows and desires. Now, so why did God choose Judas then, right? Why did God choose a man he knew would betray him, a man he knew would uh, potentially, uh, for all, I mean, uh, Thomas Aquinas makes the argument uh, that Judas is the one person we can consider uh, uh, having gone to hell, right? The church doesn't condemn anybody to hell, not even Judas, but the argument of Aquinas is Christ himself says to him or of him, woe to he by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It is better for him that he were never born. Um, and Aquinas points out, um, if Judas had to suffer any kind of torments or punishments in purgatory, even until the end of time, it would still be better for him to have been born, suffer that, um, those torments, but still get the, the glory of heaven, because the glory and the joys of heaven outweigh any amount of temporal suffering. So the fact that Christ said to Judas, it's better for him if he'd never been born, implies uh, his suffering will endure forever. He, uh, he's not going to make it. Uh, but still, the church does not, it's not doctrine, it's not the teaching of the church that Judas is in hell, uh, but it, it's, it's uh, been a, a pretty much a tradition, a, a pious tradition that, um, you know, one out of 12, one out of the 12 apostles betrayed, betrayed Christ and was lost. And again, why did Christ do that? Why did God choose Judas knowing he was going to be a traitor? Uh, and the answer is because he had a job to do. It was not as if God decided, okay, you know, I have my 11 apostles and now I need to choose a traitor. Absolutely not. Uh, the, all the apostles had the same chance at salvation and the same chance at damnation. It was up to them. They chose their own fate. And each of them was chosen specifically not for the, the end, but for, um, you would say, the process. The Christ wanted apostles. He wanted to found a church. And in founding that church, each of them had a job to do. They had work to do. And they were necessary in a certain manner of speaking. Um, each one had, a, you would say, a unique set of skills. Not all of them were fishermen. Not all of them were tax collectors. Not all of them were Galileans. There was a diversity of skills, uh, and Judas had particular skills that were needed. And despite his, his perdition, uh, his, these earthly tasks needed to be accomplished. And what a sad fate is that, is Judas actually did the work. He did the work he was supposed to do for those three years. He followed Christ. You know, he was preaching himself. He probably, you know, may, may have worked miracles, at least of conversion or whatever it may have been. 
And yet he lost the crown, right? He lost that glory because his heart was set on evil. And someone else took it. Someone else took his crown and took his place, and they did their work, and they were saved. And uh, it's important to note that Judas was unknown uh, by the other apostles to be the traitor. Even on the very night when he betrayed our Lord, uh, after our Lord says, you know, one of you will betray me, they all didn't point their fingers at Judas and say, oh, it's you, you scumbag. Um, He was exteriorly good. He looked just like the rest of them. Uh, But on the inside, right, his heart had become corrupt, right? Satan entered him finally, right? Satan had been knocking at the door, and Judas gave in to, as it says, he held the purse. He was a thief. Judas gave in to greed, and then he gave in completely, and Satan entered him. Uh, So it's not enough, right, to appear good on the outside or to do good on the outside. We have to be good on the inside. And, um, you know, how often does it seem today, right, that there are so many Judases in the priesthood, uh, so many, um, you know, bishops and priests, um, that, are, that are, are turning their back on Christ, traitors. Well, it was the same case a thousand years ago. St. Peter Damien was writing about that very thing, the very vice that is all over the church today. Um, but we should be careful, right, about, about condemnations. Uh, as Peter Damien says, you have, to, you have to hope for the redemption. And not every bad priest is a homosexual. And you would even say, right, not every homosexual is a bad priest. That's even possible, too. Um, they, 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 who knows what, what torments are on the inside? I, I remember hearing an account of a priest who was kind of caught in the, there's a homosexual uh, cabal. There's like this lavender mafia. It's real. It's true. And a priest got caught up in that, and he wanted out, and he, almost, he couldn't do it. It was very, very hard. Uh, the pressures they put, the enticements, the, 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 the threats, it's extremely vicious. Uh, those, those who are bent on homosexuality as opposed to those who get, you would say, caught up in it. And many, many who escape that lifestyle say the same thing. Um, so recall, right, that, that actually that both Judas and Peter, St. Peter himself, uh, not St. Peter Damien, I'm talking St. Peter the Apostle, uh, betrayed Christ, denied Christ. Right? The difference was redemption, right, was, was sorrow. St. Saint, Saint Peter wept. Uh, Judas hardened his heart and persisted in his evil. And that's a difference. That's what St. Peter Damien is getting at. Right, you have to you have to sort out who are the Judases and who are the St. Peters, right? Uh, who are the Mary Magdalene's? So, um, you know, we have to think about that today. Um, that that of the evil priests, um, there will be those who repent and uh, become very very good priests, or or, or continue rather and uh, become better. And for those Judases in the priesthood, God is going to raise up the Saint Matthiases, right? They there will be those men who will take their they take their place, right? Let his bishopric be taken away from him and given to another. That will happen. After all the bad popes, all the bad bishops, uh, if this is not the end of the world at this time, uh, men will take their place. Good men, solid men, uh, St. Matthias, men who are going to preach the truth, who are going to continue the mission of Christ and and the the true mission of the apostles, and uh, and willing to die a martyr for the faith. Uh, That is possible. I believe firmly that is coming. Uh, We just have to hang on through these, these dark, rough times until such happens. And who knows, right? Maybe the lots uh, will fall on us. Maybe we'll be one of the ones God chooses to carry on his mission. We never know. Uh, But simply let us prepare ourselves uh, through prayer, sacrifice, penances, taking Lent seriously, and uh, kindness, right? Not judging others steeped in sin, uh, condemning the sin, but being very patient with the sinner uh, himself. So let's pray for that grace. Pray for uh, uh, perseverance, for faith, uh, for hope, for charity, uh, through the intercession of St. Peter, St. Matthias, and all holy uh, priests, bishops. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost.